Hey guys, this is Kevin. Uh, today will be Ask Kevin project, which uh, I select a couple questions from from customers or uh, friends. Uh, then I try to reply to it. Uh, it's kind of a diagnosis uh, somebody's uh, illness through the internet. I mean, there's no way that I can. Uh, there's no way. I, I mean, my answer will be the best answer that that you you may have. So, I just gave you some thought. Okay, so it doesn't work. Doesn't work. Okay. Today's question from uh, uh, Poland. Okay. Uh, let me try the Google pronunciation when I read the translation. Mam problem z urządzeniem Epson L czternaście pięćdziesiąt pięć. I think Google's uh, English robot is more slutty. Listen to this. I have a problem with the Epson L1455 such that after starting up, connecting to the power supply, the printer starts up by itself and the date and time reset message appears. The printer is not completely responsive. Epson firmware updater cannot see the USB in LAN device. I have run out of ideas for a solution and I am looking for help. Smile regards. Okay. Um the first thing I say is uh, your printer start up, so there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, nothing. There, there's nothing wrong with the power supply. Okay, so I read at the time and date. So I actually I try to go to norm, normal mode, and then the reset message appears. That's weird because uh, most firmware, if it's in the firmware update mode, it won't go to the date and time. So there's something scrub on the firmware that when you go to normal mode. Uh, my problem is I never seen the reset message before. I uh, don't know what the reset message it is. Uh, what kind of my reset message it is? The printer is not not completely responsive. So I mean, if I see a video, I, I may have more ideas. Then the Epson firmware updater can now see the USB and the LAN, and uh, this means the printer itself is not identify itself on the USB. Okay, my suggestion one is uh, I don't know what your uh, L LCD screen look like, so it seems you cannot do anything from the computer side. So try to do something. On the LCD part, see if uh, if you can have other choices, not reset or something. And uh, yeah, this is weird. And uh, the second thing I can think of is uh, if I do it, and uh, if I don't have any other solution, another things to try, I might force to copy uh, firmware. Uh, firmware onto the, the the printer. So first thing I will try is do it is, uh, from software. Some printers that uh, you have uh, you can force it by turning the printer into a firmware firmware update mode by pressing couple keys. So um, you can uh, after you put it in the firmware update mode, uh, the printer can accept your computers request for update which there there uh, which uh, sometimes otherwise you the printer will not accept it and uh, I I don't know anything about l1450 because it's not a US model uh, so you probably the best bet is search on the internet and I did a quick search I didn't find it I didn't find any quick solutions and when you search be careful about those uh, uh, spam website. Uh, for example, download.epson/base.com. So that definitely is a spam website because it's trying to tie itself to Epson. So if I click, you can see it try to disguise itself as a genuine Epson website. And uh, this is a good website, like a uh, Inkchip, Inkchip, uh, Inkchip.net. That's a good website. And uh, Inkchip.net, and although this is not for eco tanks, uh, you still got a lot of instructions. For example, Inkchip.net will show you 
uh, the other models how to turn into the firmware update mode. So I I would suggest just uh, go to go there and uh, take a look. Uh, for example, this one you press down and two, three, four. Uh, I mean, I mean you you press this first, so then you hold O four, and uh, then and and then you uh, you you turn the power on. So if you even even yours is uh, equal tank, you try those combinations. If your your control panel is similar to this. Uh, sometime apps and when they design the same kind of uh, uh, the LED screen, they don't want to re rewire it. So uh, it's exactly the same sequence as the non eco tank. So if that doesn't work, so there's a software called WIC. Okay, I'll give you the website. So it's WIC.support. And uh, it has a uh, it has a WIC program that uh, you can download and install on your computer. Then uh, it gave you more error code and uh, and also we're looking for other firmware that uh, that they have either either is back compatible or go forward update. Um, so you can try to install a, a copy of firmware this way. Okay. And if this doesn't work, okay, uh, we can copy the firmware physically, and uh, there are going to be a lot of links. It's a little tedious for you to copy them. Uh, you can text the word firmware one number one to this number, and I will text you back uh, to the article full article and uh, check the reference section of the article that has all the links that I'm going to mention. Apps usually store the firmware in the SOAP 8. Uh, and this is really easy to identify on the motherboard. They are like a square, square shape, black. And uh, you can see this one is Spencer brand. And they have uh, eight legs. Uh, that one has, uh, that, that one had uh, three chips. Uh, most, of, most of them have, have two chips. For example, this one is for EcoTank. And you can see it's marked as IC5. The chip will have its brand on the top. For example, this one is a windbound chip. And you can see there's something wrong with it already. Yeah, on the bottom, it's melted. Uh, to be able to do this, you need uh, the file, a healthy file from a working motherboard or main board. You can get a physically working board to copy, or you can download a bin file that somebody already made. Uh, we have a little selection. You can go to bchtechnology.com and uh, go to printer parts, then select Epson, and then select uh, electronic board and assembly. And then you can see there's a bin dump. Yeah, we try to make more and uh, have more available, um, but uh, I doubt I'll have uh, your version. So if you uh, if you don't have it, maybe ask for uh, ask around if somebody has a healthy printer that they can borrow. Uh, to copy it, you need uh, something called a programmer. Um, I have this one uh, X uh, XGECU, and also have uh, another program called so Sophie. So they're equivalent. is It's about uh, seventy or eighty dollars. Uh, those are mid range programmers. I, I normally don't use like a ten ten dollar programmer. Um, so this is the programmer, and uh, what you do is you put an adapter clip on it. I think it's this one. So you put a eight uh, eight leg. Uh, a clip on this. Then you connect. Uh, uh, you connect this end of the clip to here, and uh, so and uh, and then you use uh, this black clip. You put it on your main board's soap eight uh, the the chip. So in this way, you don't need to solder the the chip off. So you can just read directly from main board, and you borrow a healthy main board from your friend, and uh, 
you, you install the software, say copy, and that's going, going to suck up the information and uh, dump into your, your your computer, and then you uh, move this clip to your to your malfunction mainboard, and uh, say write, and uh, the computer going to spit out the information and override the firmware. And uh, so if you bought a, a bin file. And uh, what you can do is on your computers, you say load. That's going to load the information from bin file to your computer. And then you put this clip on your malfunction board. Say write. That's going to write to the board. Uh, talking about programmers and the firmware, the best the best programmer actually is made in Poland. It's called Revotronics. And that's what I have here. Um, this is the one I have. So, uh, I don't know. It's uh, for me. I'm, I spend most of my money on the shipping. So, if you can get it cheap from Poland, and uh, I highly suggest suggest this one. I I can read more chips, and uh, you're going to have lots of fun with it. Okay, and uh, I hope uh, uh, I hope this helps you. I don't know, and uh, so far away. So. Uh, that's all my suggestion right now. Have a good day. Cheers.